Hey everybody, Steve here, KM9G. My friend, the Smoking Ape, asked me, challenged me, threatened me, I don't know. He's a big guy. Don't mess with him. Uh, to come up with a $1,000 ham shack, what my take would be on a $1,000 ham shack. So I wanted to share that with you folks today. I am going to take a different kind of take. If you've seen my channel, you know that I like to build things. I don't like to just buy things. And I really don't do a lot of actual like voice operation. I tend to like prove that something works and then go on to the next new shiny thing. So let's get started with proving that something works. So what I'm going to look at first is my friends over at the QRP guys website. These guys have a lot of fantastic gear and it's a fantastic way to get started with the hobby to learn about how radios are built, manufactured work. They have schematics, they have installation instructions that are fantastic. They have kits for a variety of skill levels. I'm going to dive right in and have you build your first radio. That's right. Build your first radio. The radio that I chose of theirs, they have a couple, but the radio that I chose of theirs is the AFP FSK Digital Transceiver 3. They've had a couple of versions of this before, which is why this is number three. I have built on my channel the version before this, which was the dual sideband FT8 transmitter. And then there was the VFO kit that got added onto that. And then this I believe is, is how they got to number three. This radio will do digital modes and it will do a variety of different kinds of digital modes. So you can prove that it works fairly easily. What we have is 20 meters, 30 meters, and 40 meters. We have a VFO, a variable frequency oscillator. So you can change the, the station that you're transmitting on or listening to. So this will be a ready to go radio out of the box to get you up and on the air and having fun once you get it working but we'll get it working, don't worry about that. After you have the radio built, you're gonna to need to have an antenna. And I use the QRP guys 40, 30, 20 meter tri-band antenna quite a bit. It's a very, it's very easy to move around radio antenna. It has an ability to be tuned in to the frequency that you want to operate it on, on three different bands, and doesn't take up a lot of space. And it's also cheap. I love it. This is this uh, is an antenna kit that we built together as a group over on Kyle's channel. And I have won contests with this antenna. I may or may not have cheated in the contest, but I won the contest and that's really all that matters. I, I didn't cheat in the contest, that wouldn't be fair. So this will get you some more experience winding toroids if you haven't already gotten that on the radio kit. Uh, this will actually get you some experience tuning toroid if you haven't done that already. So you can take your skills that you learned from building the radio kit and build the antenna kit, and you can take the skills that you learned from building the antenna kit and work your way backwards to the radio and improve the radio work that you did. See where I'm going? There's this building of knowledge here. So now we've got this 40-30-20 antenna and this 40-30-20 radio. What if we want to do a different mode that the antenna isn't resonant on? QRP guys to the rescue because they have a multi-Z tuner kit for 40 through 10 meters. And this would be building your very own antenna tuner. And it will give you all of the details. I'm not gonna give you any spoilers, but it's gonna give you all of the details of how the tuner works, why the tuner works, what you're doing when you're doing the tuning. And when you come away from these three kits of the radio, the antenna, and the tuner, you're gonna have a lot of fundamentals of knowledge of how ham radio works and where you can go with ham radio. And you're gonna have spent $180 at this point. You may or may not have tools, so we will get you some tools. Let's take a look at that. On the tools side of thing, you're gonna need a way to power this radio. So I've got you set up with a set of Anderson power pole crimpers and little booties and everything that you need in order to get power pole connections made. I understand that these are not genuine, authentic Anderson power pole red and black pieces of plastic. And I know there's a thing there. However, you need the crimper. And this crimper works. This is the crimper that I use. And so the crimper comes with these guys. And that's a fantastic way to get started. And if you mess them up, go get some more. And if you're one of those people that needs to have the, the A on the front of your power pole connectors, get you some A branded power pole connector. So I have the Nano VNA here for you. This is a fantastic bit of kit. There are way better antenna analyzers. There are way worse antenna analyzers. This one will do a lot of things and will take you very far in your ham journey, which is why I recommend this one. Uh, I have a couple of videos on doing different things with this and uh, 
my, my challenger, the Smoking Ape, has a ton of videos on doing these things. And so if I ever have any questions, I know to reach out to the Smoking Ape over on the Toads Discord. We're gonna need a multimeter to do some type of functionality testing, help you out while you're building the kit. I use a multimeter to test for continuity when I'm designing circuits, make sure that my connections are good. And I use it to verify the values of resistors. I know what the color codes are on the resistors, but they trick my eyes and my OCD goes into overdrive and I can't tell if it's gold or if it's yellow or if it's silver or if it's gray. So I just clip the meter leads on and it tells me what the answer is and I don't have to worry about it. The flush cutters and you're gonna need a soldering iron and you're going to need some solder. I recommend the 6337 Kester solder. I have used this on quite a lot of builds on my channel. I still have quite a lot of the roll left. I'm actually pretty surprised at how long this is lasting, considering the fact that I've built multiple complete computer systems with it, as well as radios, as well as antennas, as well as, as well as, like a lot of stuff I've built on this channel. The Hacko FX888 D has been an amazing performer. I have two of these because I made a mistake. The way that you adjust it with its massive amount of user controls, the, the two buttons, doesn't intuitively make sense to me. And I recalibrated it. So instead of being at 640 degrees on the readout and 640 degrees on the tip, I was at 640 degrees on the readout and about 200 degrees on the tip. I could almost touch it with my fingers and it wasn't hot. And that was a mistake that I made. And I paid the price by buying a second one. And then I figured out I was doing it wrong. It's a hundred bucks. It was a hundred dollar lesson. I, I, I got a hundred dollars worth of value out of that lesson. And there, there will be some lessons like that for you in your future. So now we have enough tools to build out all of these things, verify that the antenna works and get some power on, but we don't have power. So let's take a look at power real quick. There are a lot of different ways to power a ham shack, but for your ham journey, for your ham career, decide whether you're going to be a portable operator or you're going to be a stationary fixed operator, or you're gonna be a little bit of both. And I gave you the flexibility here to be a little bit of both. This is the BioNO 12 volt, six amp hour LifePo4 battery with the charger for $94.99. I could not find a decent power supply at a better price than this. So this is why we're at $94.99 with a battery. This will take you out in the field. This will work in your shack. This will give you clean signals so you don't have to worry about power supply noise or power line noise. This will also let you figure out if you do have RFI issues, you can plug your radio in to the battery and turn the power off to your house. And if all the noise goes away, it's something in your house. Then you start flipping breakers back on. And as you're flipping breakers back on, you see the noise come back. Hey, you know what's causing your noise. So there's a little bit more utility than just providing power to your radio. There is base station power, there's portable power, and then there's testing power. So that's why I chose the battery instead of the plug into the wall power supply because I can't take my wall with me in the car. In order to get the radio that you got from QRP guys working with your computer and getting some valuable usage out of it, you're gonna need to have a sound card. Oh, and some audio cables. I gotta add audio cables in. This Sovereign sound card is a well-loved, cheap sound card in the ham radio community. Your laptop, your computer may already have a built-in sound card that may work out well for you. So try that first if you have it. If you don't, here you go, $9 and you're in. If you are watching this video, you need a computer, you need an internet connection, you need sound. So you probably already have most of the stuff that you need in order to get this thing working for you. So I'm not gonna worry about that. While you have your computer and your internet connection and your sound, watching videos like this, you can also join us over on the Toads Discord and we would be happy to help you out on any of these builds or any questions you might have. It's a very friendly place, highly recommend it. I've got you set up with some BNC to SMA adapter so you can plug your BNC radio into your BNC coax, it's coming up, into your Nano VNA for testing purposes. I've got some BNC jumpers for you so that you can go from your antenna to your coax to your tuner, use the jumper to get you to the radio, and then you'll be able to have that tuner in line when you need it. You can't build an antenna without antenna wire, so I've got you some BN Tech Go 22 gauge silicon wire. This is the same wire that we use on the Cartena antennas. This is fantastic stuff. I got it in bright yellow. Get whatever color you like, but I do recommend some brighter color so that it's highly visible when you're out in the field and people don't walk into it. With that antenna wire, I've also got you some BNC binding post adapters so you can do some test work and build out your own antennas 
because you can build a very simple dipole with the BNC binding post adapter. You can build a very simple vertical antenna with the binding post adapter. You can get some jumper leads and connect to some random piece of metal out in the field and tune it up with that tuner. You can do a lot of amazing things with these binding post adapters. They will come in handy for you in your future ham career. All right, and what do you think all of this total is going to cost? What do you think this shopping spree is going to cost? You saw the title of the video, so you, you've got a pretty good idea of where we landed. But I'm not done yet. We still have a two meter ham radio station for you. This is the Redivis RT95 dual band mobile radio. This will get you two meters and 70 centimeters. With that, you're gonna need an antenna. Antenna, you can make one. You have all the pieces and all the knowledge at this point to make one, but this is 20 bucks. So this will go in your car and stay on your car. Then you're gonna need a way to power that. You can power it off of the bio NO battery for sure. But since I've got you a mag mount antenna for your car, I might as well have a way to power it in the car while you're on the go. So you can build these things, but you can't build them for cheaper than you can buy them. So I've got you a pre-made uh, cigarette lighter auxiliary power port to Anderson power pole connector. This Redivis RT95 radio, I think, this is why I want to play with it. Number one, it's cheap. It's 116 bucks. It's cheap. I want to play with this because I think there's a way to get it on APRS. So not only will I have a two meter, 70 centimeter voice capable FM radio system, I will also have a two meter, 144.39 frequency APRS station to play with. Let's get those audio cables added that I forgot. Here is the audio cable. You probably already have these, but these are $9 for a pair, two pack. And that'll get you your transmit and your receive, and it will plug your radio into your Sovereign sound card or into your computer if you have microphone and headphone jacks. Here we go, let's get it all totaled up. Taking a look at my handy dandy spreadsheet here, we've got the QRP guys, kits, the bio NO power, the two meter radio station, the tools, the gear. Ooh, what build festival wouldn't be complete without adding some Cartena magic to this? I've got the current Cartena series in the shopping cart for you. The Cartena Mercury is a linked dipole and it comes with the wire, the winder, and all of the accessories you need to build it out for 40, 20, and 10 meter ham bands, but you can build it out for any bands that you want, say, 15, 17, and 20, or 6, 10, and 12, whatever you'd like. The Apollo is a NFED half wave, and that will work on 40 through 10 for you. And with your Nano VNA tuner, you can get these things all tuned up and ready to roll. The grand total, as of the time of this recording, $981.31. I'm going back in to go shopping. There will be links for all of this stuff in the description down below in case you want to get your hands on any of this tasty, tasty stuff. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.